YouTubers. We are having a severe issue with my 2000 Yukon XL. Um, when we got hit with all the super cold temperatures and snow here south of Kansas City, Missouri, I went out to uh, warm up my Yukon because I had some errands to run. <clears throat> Moved my wife's car, got it warming up. And when I was walking back by the Yukon, I thought, God, I think I can smell gas. So I got, in, I got inside the cab and I could smell gas inside the cab worse than I could smell outside of the car. Popped the hood finally. The fuel pressure regulator on the fuel rail is literally pouring gas. Thankfully, it didn't run long enough to catch on fire or do anything stupid like that. So basically it's just been sitting in the driveway for a week and today it's uh, it's getting up close to 27, 28 degrees, and we don't have a bunch of stupid wind chills, so I went ahead and pulled it in the garage. Right there, where the fuel pressure regulator is, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, toes and eyes, that the actual plastic of the fuel rail isn't cracked. Hopefully just that over of the fuel pressure regulator insert failed. So I've got another one from the scrap pile over here. I'm sorry, my collection of parts. And we're gonna, I'm gonna try to just change the fuel pressure regulator insert, and hopefully that'll fix the leak. So let's see what happens. See how wet that is. When that thing is running, it literally is pouring gas down on the intake. Please let it just fix without having to pull the stupid fuel rail. I don't know, we'll let's see. Okay guys, I got the retaining ring or clip removed with my extra large flat blade screwdriver. And I could see where that thing was shooting gas around that O-ring. The O-ring doesn't look damaged, but I haven't removed it from the engine yet. Here's what I'm thinking. If something in that fuel pressure regulator could get, I don't know, clogged up or something, could it create enough pressure to push that regulator out? Okay, so we found some definite failure points. Um, okay, so we pulled this fuel pressure regulator assembly from the fuel rail on the Yukon. Uh, I don't see any marked differences. Well, I, I can tell you, this is not near as tight as the one I took off of my spare rail. I don't know why this would be so sprung, I guess, for lack of a better term. But we will be using the newer and better shape retainer. I was just kind of looking up in here to see if there was any debris or trash or something but i don't see anything up there that would cause any kind of like back pressure issues but if you look at the main the main body o-ring has some damage inside your fuel rail and there's a small indention like this part right here right in here there's an o-ring there's an o-ring seal here the one that came out of my Yukon is torn pretty bad. The, it's torn, it's exploded and torn to where it failed for sure. So probably what happened was this internal O-ring that goes in here, goes in here, failed for whatever reason. I guess they can just die or maybe the ethanol content in today's gas deteriorated and i don't know it looks pretty healthy other than it's torn but apparently this failed which is in turn what caused this issue because if you look at the screen this has an internal screen this thing is literally cupped instead of being flat it's cupped like this from pressure I don't know why that's doing that or why you know what i mean i don't understand what would have so much pressure from behind that it's literally bowing or cupping 
that internal screen. That's very odd. So we've got a little bit of damage to the outside O-ring, a huge amount of damage to the inside O-ring. I haven't felt any burrs or cracks or anything like that. I don't know. Maybe this is exactly what can happen to these things with time and age. Because I'm looking at this one, the filter is completely flat. There's no deformation, no cupping, no nothing on it. This outer O-ring, the blue one, has no visible damage or anything, which I will lube all these up before I install it in my Yukon. But it's weird. I even took the little O-ring from inside the, the spare rail and it looks to be perfect. There's no damage to it. It might be a little hard, but my gosh, if I'm correct, this fuel rail came from either a two, 2000 or 2002. I think this might be a 2002. I'm not 100% sure. Junkyard motor, so engine. Sorry, I know people get triggered when you use the wrong terminology. So let me lube all this. I'm going to clean everything, lube it up real good. Okay, got everything lubed up with some petroleum jelly. Installed the small O-ring on there. Made sure the big blue one had plenty of lube on it. So let's get ready to put it back in the Yukon and hopefully it'll work. Camera angle. Open. Please. Please, uh... Don't be cracked and please don't be leaking. Once we change it, clean this out one more time. Got a lot of freaking fuel. And, yeah, it's not goopy or anything. Alright, let's just see what we can do. Just so you know, I've never changed one of these before. So if I mess this up. You guys don't kill me. Alright, let's go slow. Work that thing in really slow. Because maybe somebody had that apart in the past and tore that stupid O ring or something. Okay. Note to self pay attention how this clip came off. Hopefully, I can push this down with my finger. Hold on. Surely that ain't going that damn easy, did it? Come on, light. I love this fiber freight light, but the magnet just doesn't want to stick half the time. But you can't see where it's worth a darn without it. Alright, let's see if we can get that tighter there. That looks good. I went ahead and popped it. You can get it over the assembly and the plastic, and there's little tabs that locate it. But when you pull it all the way down, you'll see where the back side of the clip hooks the, that tab at the top of the plastic and basically forces this regulator into the hole, which will keep it from leaking. And then of course we gotta plug in our plug in our vacuum line. It shouldn't be that big of a deal. There's another thing. When you, anytime you guys are looking at one of these LS engines with the return fuel system, carefully inspect these boots from your vacuum line, from your fuel pressure regulator to the intake, because these things are known to crack, which will cause fuel pressure issues. Alrighty. Well, alrighty, Walmart shoppers. We got that uh, different, say different, replacement fuel pressure regulator put in. Let's find out if it works or not.
back the truck up. Apparently we had a second issue that I guess I've had the whole time I've owned the vehicle, which is a little over a year. Um, wow, how this thing went as long as it did and me not realize. Okay, let me just explain. So after I was gonna finish the video, I had started the Yukon and was just letting it sit here and warm up, make sure it didn't develop any leaks or anything. If you look at this super clean area between where your vacuum source is to your fuel pressure regulator, uh, I noticed it was really wet with gas. And I'm like, where, what's up there other than the crossover on the fuel rail? How could gas be coming from up there? So I went ahead and took the cover loose, which is a pain in the ass to get out. So I just raised it up far enough where I could see. Sure enough, this entire area from that little tab all the way down was just covered with raw gas. So I thought, oh, I must have a crack in my intake or something. I'm like, no, there shouldn't be any gas up there. So what had happened was somebody at some point was having problem with the fuel pressure regulator as i mentioned before that's a 90 to 100 dollars to buy a replacement one at the parts store so what they chose to do was they just put a block off nipple which is badly deteriorated over the vacuum source at the on the side of the intake it's supposed to go to the fuel pressure regulator and just had this um, hard vacuum hose setting underneath that cover. You can tell it's really dirty. So basically it had no vacuum reference to the fuel pressure regulator at all. And when that fuel pressure, when the original fuel pressure regulator finally failed 100%, it was shooting raw gas up through that tube out of that vacuum hose all over the top of the intake so that's <laughs> yep but anyway that's the kind of stuff i run into in my life and you know there's goofballs everywhere that'll try anything to save a buck so now we have a working fuel pressure system with a good solid vacuum source to a replacement fuel pressure regulator and it's taken a little while for the computer to adjust to it but she's starting to run even better now so man i guess you got to check all the little things that you really shouldn't have to when you buy a used car to make sure somebody hasn't put a butter bean in your soup so all right guys and gals we were able to fix our little daily driver which ironically I, we were unable to use our only four-wheel drive vehicle during this stupid snowstorm we got because a few you know, i was deathly afraid to even drive it to a friend's shop you know which would be anywhere from two miles to six miles from my house because it was leaking so much fuel that i just couldn't chance it catching on fire or doing something stupid but when the wind chills 28 below I'm not working on that crap in the driveway anymore. I'm too old for that junk. But I got online and was looking up fuel pressure regulators. Because, Lord, these things are almost $100 at O'Reilly's. And that just wasn't in the budget. So when you can save yourself 90 to to 100 bucks and get your car back on the road, then you remember why you keep all that old crap on the shelf. I'm actually curious if there's a difference in part numbers between any of these fuel pressure regulators or are they all preset at the same pressure as long as it's a return style truck fuel rail now i personally i'm a huge fan and i'll only run a feed and a return on my ls vehicles but what i'd like to see stainless steel version because I've heard they made a stainless steel version of this return style regulator, possibly in around the 03, 04 year trucks. 
because that's about the time they started introducing, I think, don't hold me to this 100%, but I think that's about the time they started introducing flex fuel compatible trucks, somewhere around that 0304 mark. So two things, the lines on those flex fuel ones would be stainless steel. They at least visually appear to be a slightly larger diameter tubing. Cause I think if I remember correctly, the pictures I've seen, it's like a square tubing between the rails and it actually looks bigger than this. Um, probably your feed and return would be the same size, I'd assume, but wouldn't it be interesting to see, do those flex fuel compatible vehicles actually have a different pressure rating for their factory fuel pressure regulators because those flex fuel injectors are, when you look up their flow rating, they're flowed at a different pressure than your regular truck injectors. Hmm. Maybe I'm overthinking it, but just this little issue has really got me thinking about if there could be any differences in these setups. Anyway, throwing up this video, plus I've got a couple more I'm trying to edit. So that way we've all got something to watch, I guess. I appreciate you guys watching. Please like, subscribe, and share.